There's historic pollution, so like the Passaic River, all the industry that we had on the waterways dumping and cleaning that up. And then we still have ongoing pollution from combined sewers and polluted runoff from stormwater. What's in runoff? What happens to runoff? So that's the water that you, when it rains, it runs over your lawns, picks up all the phosphorus or fertilizer, Fertilizers. dog waste, anything that's on the surface of the um, roadways in your lawns goes right into the storm sewers, which does not get treated, and then goes right out into the waterways. What are you doing to encourage people to um explore their waterways and see what their what impact they're having on it? Right. I mean, we are up here in, in New York, New Jersey Harbor. We're surrounded by water and we're really trying hard to get people out. So we do everything from offering free kayak um, tours of the Raritan Bay Shore out of Keyport, where our office is located. We do a great free event in Woodbridge to get people on the Woodbridge River, which most people don't even know exists. And what to what end? Do you have people out on the water? So we really want them to discover their local waterways and, and embrace them and then become advocates for them. When they ask questions about, wow, why can't I go in the water today? Or why am I, my, is my access blocked off to the water? Then that gets people thinking and asking their elected officials and making different um, choices and decisions about how we treat our waterways. What's the single most important issue affecting the estuaries into the harbor? You know, I think there is kind of a lack of public engagement and public knowledge about this great resource and how we need to do better protecting it. And so once we get through that and we get people engaged, then we can tell them, well, you could be reducing the fertilizer you use. Please pick after, up after your dog. Um, on a regulatory side, it's cleaning up the contaminated sediment so that people can safely eat you know, eat the fish and the crabs. Of course, famously in the Passaic River, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the lower Passaic has big signs saying, don't eat the crabs from here. Yeah. Um, th that is being cleaned up, right? Right, so the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency announced a plan for the um, cleanup of the lower eight miles, which goes from the Belleville border down into Newark, um, and removing, uh, you know, over two million cubic yards of contaminated sediment, yeah. So we'll hear more about that in the coming year, about where we're going with that. What was the impact of Hurricane Sandy on this area? So Hurricane Sandy was and is still really devastating this area. Um, most people don't realize the storm surge in Newark got up to 10 to 12 feet, um, overwhelmed the wastewater treatment plant there, which is one of the largest in the country, and um, it's still recovering. We had floodwaters that were mixed with raw sewage and industrial chemicals, you know, going into our communities along with oil spills. From and all. cars and gasoline. Right. And Right. What kind of resources are you developing to help communities along the shore uh, prevent that kind of thing in future storms? So one of the things that we think is, is really important to, you know, not only look at the hard structure that people are looking at, walls and berms, but to look at the softer using natural systems like wetlands and what we call green infrastructure to um, slow down both the energy from a storm, so this could be everything from you know, oyster reefs that they want to build off the South Shore of Staten Island to more local um, rain gardens and other green infrastructure to not only help with a big storm, but all the localized flooding that we see on a regular basis. Debbie Manns, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much.